Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Beacon of Light podcast tonight. We have a bonus session with Miss Lisa Pitty, and I'm so excited for her to be here joining us this evening. So welcome, everybody. Make sure you pop on in, tell us where you're from, and we will share where we're from as well. Tonight's an exciting night because Lisa is so generous. She's going to be giving away a free copy of her book to the person that is the most engaged in tonight's conversation. So get in there, get engaged, start communicating, put down those comments, and let's see where this takes us because we would love to give away this free book tonight. And Lisa, in her generosity, she wants to be able to do that just for you guys. So again, welcome to the podcast tonight. My name is April Tribe Juke. And I am broadcasting from tonight in Kyle, Texas. And Lisa, where are you broadcasting from tonight? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Excellent, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How's the weather like over there? Actually, it's not so bad. We have no snow and we normally would this time of year. Wow, we got the snow yesterday from you guys, I think. <laughs> we stole it. <laughs> it was really? so fun. Oh, oh yes, we had snow in Austin, Texas. My kids built snowman. Like, I can't believe it. <laughs> it was a fun time. It was a great I fun time. Say. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very fun. Few and far between times. So, um, as long as they're having fun. Yep, exactly. Precisely. So, as you can see, running down below here us on the ticker is her book, Deeper Living the Christian Life in the Deep Down. Wow, what an awesome title. Can you share with us about this book and why it all came about? Okay. Um, I, a couple years ago, I started toying around and I put some retreat material together. And at the after that was over, I really felt like this call within me was blooming. And I somehow got the idea that maybe I could turn the retreat material into a book. Wow. So that wasn't hard, um, but it was actually sitting down to do it. So I share part of my story, my journey of healing and the transformation that took place. Um, so I was very happy with it. Uh, I feel like this as a writer and in life, I'm not a person to use a lot of words. So you won't ever find a big fat book, but it'll be pointed. And even so when I when I had a group of people that read the book um, as part of my launch team, I thought it was gonna be more of a girl book. And it turned out that even the men that read the book said, wow, I have some work to do. Excellent, wow. That is great that you can meet two groups at one time and having the men admit, my goodness, I could be working on something. That mm -hmm. is pretty incredible. So way to go, congratulations on that type of pointed writing. Excellent. Uh, thank you. And so basically, you know, there's lots of people that have horrible stories. Uh, certainly, there were people that, other than me, that came up in an Italian family that um, by today's standards would be not so good. But also, there are people that lived worse lives than me. But I had my life to live. And as a child, and we all know this, that childhood impacts the way you grow up and view the world. I didn't realize it until I hit somewhere about 45 that um, I just had some skewed ways of thinking and reactivity. So things that my husband would say, for example, I would become highly defensive. Um, situations with my family, my sister, let, okay? It would become volatile. And then the Lord started to deal with me at a heart level, you know, this is what's really going on deep down in here. What you say you believe isn't what isn't connecting down here. And um, lo and behold, you know, God sends you places, even in in your work life. 
I started working um, for a child advocacy agency as an administrative assistant. And there I had to face some of the things that I never knew were really like not so good. Um, and I'll never forget that uh, it made the news one day, they caught a man on a camera whooping his son with a belt in a parking lot. And I said, I used to get beat like that. And everybody there like whipped their head around. First time I really knew that not everybody grew up that way. They had some very good friends that uh, held space for me. And I had learned how to listen to the voice of God. And what I just, it just, as he, think memory surfaced, I would say, what do you want to say about this, God? And that's how my healing came. He spoke truth deep down. And so that's what I, that's why I named the book that, that because too many of us, we become Christians with a hope of life getting better. And in some ways it does, but then there's this ache on the inside, like something's missing still, even though I know my savior, even though I'm doing all the right things, something is still missing. I went searching for that something. And so uh, I had a couple of choices also while I was on this path. I could do this with God. I could go to therapy. I could go stand in a prayer line. And in fact, all of them, I did all of them. They're all valuable. I had a, went to see a therapist um, three times. All three times were very pivotal moments. Um, one put me in touch with my anger. Anger I didn't realize I had uh, because I had learned how to suppress it being the good Christian that I was. And of course you go, you you receive prayer from other people, but the bulk of everything comes directly between you and the Father. And my hope is that in writing this book and sharing this kind of a message is that we take uh, the idea and the concept of emotional healing being available in Christ and make it mainstream because it's not, it's, it's in pockets of places. But emotional wholeness, it's so needed. We're really good at bringing people in the doors of the church and sending them out. But they're, everybody's on their own to grow. And so we have wonderful teachers and all of that, but there's always this one part that I feel like is missing. I'm a coach and that's what I offer people is a chance to heal. And it's, I offer them encounters with God. So when you learn how to connect with God at a heart level, everything starts to change. And so you get this healing and then you get this spiritual growth and you have satisfaction in your relationship with God and you stop performing and you stop saying all the right things. And they really just are the right things because they're coming from your heart and you're not just mimicking what everybody else is doing. So my whole hope is that the message of emotional wholeness goes worldwide. And I'd like to do that through an app uh, where I could, can create an app that helps people drill down, uh, get beyond the crazy making thinking, um, the stories we tell ourselves, the coping strategies that we all run to or run away from. Um, so like just to name those strategies, of course, there's addictions, but then there's self-protection and then there's um, negative evaluations where we beat ourselves up and we put ourselves down and we're mean to ourselves. And that, honestly, that's something I still struggle with from time to time. Yeah, I think so many of us can identify and relate with that because 
You know, I call him, <clears throat> excuse me, I call him that shame shadow. It's always there, never shuts up. Oh, yeah, well, I saw this the other day. And, hmm, so you think you're all of that. And whatever it is, for me, doubt, doubt, doubt. That's its, you know, that's my weakness. And so there it goes. And I think immediately, oh, I can perform, I can perfect, I can please somebody. No, wait a minute. That's my crazy making. That's shame me how we're there on my shoulder talking. Mm. Oh, yeah, turn to the light. Okay, got it back to God. Whew, glad that was only 15 minutes of craziness and not another 15 years. <laughs> but it's taken yeah. me a long time to get to that point. And when I start to listen and feel myself drop, I'm like, oh, hey, wait, hang, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> that's the awareness piece. And that's the that's the thing is that we don't bring everything into the light. Like in Ephesians, it talks about that. Bring it into the light. And it becomes illuminated. So you can be aware of doubt, but when you bring it to the Lord and say, let's talk about this. What's your perspective on this? And why is this so hard for me to just accept? Why am I more like Peter that doubts? Um, when you do that, you open up a conversation with God that can be pretty enlightening. Right. In that enlightenment, what is some of your favorite messages that have come to you? Oh, so, so um, in one of my crazy making days, I was like, so uh, what do you think about what I'm believing, God? Simple question. What do you think about what I'm believing? I mean, this kind of took me by surprise, and it might take your viewers by surprise. But this is what I heard. <laughs> Raspberries. And I was like, what? So you think that's nuts? Okay, then I guess I don't have to think that way anymore. And it was just that simple to let it go because I heard it directly from the Father. Wow. I love it. Sometimes we need those reality checks. And I too have heard similar things where I'm waiting, thinking, wondering, you know, here comes this response and the simplicity of it and the shock of it. It, it becomes in a humorous way for me to go, oh, oh okay. And then I can just <laughs> kind of drop it and, and move forward. And I love when we are speaking with our Heavenly Father, understanding our relationship with Him and how He created our spirits before He created us. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, He will know us fully. And when through prayer and through reading, as we connect with Him, we can understand how He will communicate with us, how to listen to Him. And I love the concept mm -hmm. of hear Him. As we hear, him, it's very personal, mm -hmm. very specific, and it's always done in that quiet manner, right? And we know when it's when it's hit, you just know. So whether it was a bunch of raspberries coming at you yeah. <laughs> or something else, you know. Well, and, and, and let it go. Is once you start down this road, it becomes a lifestyle. You just become so in love, enamored, and hooked, hooked on the relationship. And it's no longer about, did I pray long enough? Did I read enough? And so you open it up, the longer you do it, it becomes more of a two-way conversation. Um, so much so that you know, I drive to a park every morning to walk. On the way to the park today, it was like the Lord said, um, you know that thing you've been resisting? And I was like, ah. Oh. And he just spoke truth, simple truth. No shame. Everything became clear. And it's a beautiful way to live. Agreed. It is a beautiful way to live. 
And when we go deeper into living that Christian life in the deep down, it is that connection because we are able to stand in the light. We are able to connect, understand, and just feel the joy. Mm-hmm. Men are that they might have joy. And in that joy, we know that we've had deep sorrows, but we've also can now understand the, the, the happiness and that peace that comes. And in healing and in resolving things with our Lord and Savior, there are more and more open opportunities than to turn around and to see our fellow brothers and sisters like, come here, let me show you. And I'm sure as you're coaching and showing them in this direction, has there been anyone that's been really somebody that's, you know, maybe made an impression on your heart through their healing process that you have supported? Oh, I, so I don't coach necessarily for long periods of time because if they're able to connect with the father sooner rather than after six months, there is really no need for them to continue. If they get what they needed from the father, I feel like I was a facilitator. So um, for, let's see. Oh, I'll tell you about um, the cards. The cards can let you do this kind of work privately. They take you from strong emotion to thoughts behind thoughts, to coping strategies, to figuring out what your heart really needs, and then going to the Father for him to give your heart what it really longs for. And so if uh, this is one of my favorites, Um, a young lady, uh, she came in for the first time after several months of counseling with others on multiple opt, uh, multiple counselors. She came in, we went through the cards one time and she stood there staring. She said, you just took me deeper in 20 minutes than two months of counseling. And so I feel like this is not, we don't, I don't coach for goals. I coach for you, my client, or anybody else to meet with God and connect with him because that's really what he wants. He wants our hearts. And if you, you know, what's that old saying? Um, Give somebody a fish or teach them how to fish. I just teach you how to get in God's presence in a very specific way. Yes, and when we learn that connection, really our responsibility is just to continue to deepen the relationship even more. And and it is it is exciting and because you get those feelings of of love, of grace, of forgiveness, of mm-hmm. you know, help and support and yeah, it it becomes what faith is. It becomes that action. And, and sometimes when we just have a hope or a belief, we can take it into some action and then Mm -hmm. more things can be fulfilled. And um, I think the timing of things are very interesting because God's timing where he knows everything will be in the right way and prayers will be answered. And sometimes because of the timing, they're answered immediately. And sometimes there's a little bit of a wait and that's okay because I, I remember thinking to myself in doing prayer as just as a little girl, I was like two, three years old, I had lost one of my favorite teddy bears and it was called a pappy bear because my mom had tied a string to the bear to my pacifier. And so I legged this little bear everywhere and if my pacifier fell out, it was tied to the bear so I wouldn't lose it. And uh, one time I lost this bear and I just was crying. I was so upset. It was just a little kid. and. I got a feeling and understanding I should pray. So I prayed to find the bear. And within seconds, I found the bear. And I knew at two and a half, three years old that God listened to me. Little tiny me on this whole planet, like me. That testimony forever. I know he's there. And not everyone has that at at that young of an age, but I did at that time, so simple, so early. And so in connecting and praying and understanding Heavenly Father and our relationship together, 
I mean, I treasure that. I've known that knowledge for such a long, so many years now, it's decades. And I <laughs> consider that such a blessing because many might not have that. And I'm, I just feel overwhelmed with blessings for that. And that's really true. Like you hear people say, I know God loves me, but it's because he has to. Or I know God loves me, but down here, I don't really believe that. And I've actually had people say that. And it's heartbreaking. But that's to describe the disconnect between the head and the heart. And we all have that from time to time. So while I coach people with anxiety and unresolved trauma, the truth is, is that we, you don't have to be anxious to need God in the secret, in the, in the deep down parts of your heart. You, because we all have things happen in our lives. That's right. And it is that common ground that we all know something's going to happen in our lives. And so why not reach out and see what he has to help and support us with and mm -hmm. to know and how to go through some of those healing processes to trust again that he is there and that things can move forward is, is really a beautiful thing. And it takes a lot of faith and action, but it can happen. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. And Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all of those parts with part of your story and with the cards to really share people. It seems like this is a really amplifying piece to help people understand how to connect with God. And, and that is a beautiful thing. So where can we find your book? Where can we, um, you know, connect with you, share with, some, with us some of those details so that more people can join, possibly heal, find their way towards their heavenly father. Uh, the book is on Amazon and on my website. And so, she's got a website running around on the scroll. Yeah. It's, coming, it's coming. There we go. <laughs> PTCenter.life. And when you go on there, there's several different things that you'll find. You'll, you'll find my books. You'll find the cut cards that I, uh, that God graciously gave me the idea for and the journal that goes with it. Excellent. So with this journal part, they're able to capture maybe some of the things that they understand in those private sessions and then record it, we're hoping, right? <laughs> and if they can record it down, I know that journal writing is really that, that capture of the moment for us to remember and to look back and reflect even and to sometimes get the crazy out of our head and put it there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're reading through what we thought was amazing there. And once it gets down there, we can go, huh. And then we've kind of swept away some of that. And now God's answers and returning for that connection can be even clearer. So exactly. exactly. Yeah. So the, yeah. And the journal is just another way to help you move through the cards. And it sort of gives you a little bit more explanation and it's just another format and people need that because everybody learns differently. You're right. You're right. Everyone does. They learn differently. And thankfully for that, because that allows us that, that freedom to be who we are, who we were created to be, not be ashamed of it, not be trying to run away or become something that we're not just accept that and then allow the learning to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So Lisa, what are some words of wisdom that you would like to leave with us this night before we close things up on this great bonus night? And we're grateful John's here. He's been saying this has been good stuff. And <laughs> you'll notice how he's got this wear blue. And mm -hmm. I'm in my blue blazer today because today is that tra human traffic awareness day. And mm -hmm. my goodness, Talk about having some healing time mm -hmm. when we know many who who can escape that. That's a road of healing that's going to take some time. But God's there and so many people are there. So thank you, John, for helping to remind us there to wear our blue. <laughs> thank you. So like I said, Lisa, what is something you would like to leave with us this evening? Um, since I'll say this because we brought up the subject of human trafficking. 
the tools for trauma are different than reading and worship and fellowship. And we need those tools to be brought into the body, readily accessible, not have to choose between therapy, prayer, or staying stuck and wounded. Uh, yeah, that's so true. So can you share with us why that needs to be um, together like that? It, uh, well, first of all, I think that God wants to be in every aspect of our lives, in our past and our present, because our past affects our present. And he wants to have that, that time to bring healing to us. And he does it sovereignly and he does it with others in community. But um, we're not necessarily very good at, uh, how do I want to say this? Seeing this when someone else is triggered and knowing what to do. We have to be sensitive to them and not give them what they already know. So some of those tools for trauma are more about presence, empathy. How about how about if we just acknowledge, okay, this is I'm in over my head. I need I need to find you someone who's more equipped. And in doing that, it's somebody who understands the kind of trauma you've been through and how to navigate your heart, how to help you open up your heart to God so that his healing work can happen. And I'm, I say that with confidence because this is what I do, but this is how I got my healing. Excellent. So you are living proof of this healing, of going through it, of watching the change happen. And that is, that is such a, a big, amazing thing for so many of us to hear. So thank you, Lisa, for sharing that with us tonight, because it is true. These things need to really be active and that they can take a place within the heart to heal. There are ways to find it. And if we're strong enough and brave enough to get started with it, wow, your life totally changes and changes in ways that sometimes mm -hmm. you're just amazed, just amazed. May I say one more thing? Oh, please, yes. Healing isn't linear. It's not an event either. It's life happens, we get hurt, and Jesus is there to pick up the pieces. So the idea is more for Yes, you have healing, but then you want to live a wholehearted lifestyle where you're in touch with what you need and what's too much and what's unacceptable. And you go forward in the grace of God and in the power of God and for whatever he has for you, but not just doing it as a robot detached from the joy. Yes, you want to be connected to it because if you're truly connected, you can just feel that joy. Our spirits and the light within us just will bring bring forward, and you can see it in the eyes of people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is so it's so beautiful to see, and the light in their eyes it it just shares so much of what they've been through, what they've overcome, mm -hmm. and who supports them, and and that's a beautiful thing. So. Thank you, Lisa, so much for that. Thank you, John, for being here tonight and giving great support. We'll have this continue out for the next two or three days and see collectively how many people will join in, pop in and see the comments throughout. And I'll give that information to Lisa and we will have a winner for her free book. So keep popping in there. Keep putting things down. Keep commenting through the evening once this, is, this one's completed and go through the replay because we want to know from you and Lisa has a beautiful book to give to you. And so we're so grateful for all the things that she shared with us this evening. And Lisa, one more time, where can they find you? PTCenter.life. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. And we hope you have a blessed evening. We'll see you. Bye.